So if your engine is uh, lacking power, there's excessive oil consumption, or very poor fuel economy, um, you may need to do a compression check to check the health of the engine. Um, a compression check is fairly easy to do. Uh, you don't only need a, a few simple tools. Um, you do need one specialty tool, which is fairly inexpensive. Um, the cost of the tool is about the same as, as the cost of getting a mechanic to do it once, and you have that tool um, forever. So it's a good idea to learn how to do it. Try it once. It's fairly easy to do, and it really gives you a good idea of the health of your engine. Um, it can tell you if you have any, uh, you know, the cylinder rings worn, um, if your valves are sticking. Um, it can really tell you, you know, what's going on inside the engine without having to rip it apart. And this is a really great idea if you're buying a used car, if you can do a compression check. It's one of the, the key tests to look at an engine. So we're going to go through how to do that. Um, on, as my, I'm using my Toyota MR2 as an example vehicle, so this is the factory service manual for that car, and this is showing just how to do the compression check as part of that manual. Um, so step number one is to warm up the engine. You want to have the oil warm, you want to have the engine warm. Um, the rings are going to be ex expanding a little bit um, when the engine warms up, and so you want to have everything under regular operating conditions. You don't want to do this cold. So let the engine idle, let it warm up first, and then turn off the engine disconnect your battery and remove your spark plugs. So I have a video on how to remove your spark plugs, how to inspect them. So this is a, you know, a good test to do if you're already going to be inspecting your sp spark plugs anyway because you need to remove them. So might as well do both inspection as well as a compression check at the same time. Um, so you need to remove your spark plugs, you need to disconnect um, your high tension cords this is the cords from the distributor, from the igniter, uh, to the distributor. Um, you also want to pull the fuse for your fuel injectors. Um, when you're test doing your compression check, you don't want the fuel injectors to be spraying fuel into the engine um, because you're not actually going to be combusting any fuel. We're going to be running the engine, so we're going to make the pistons go up and down, but we're not going to have any explosions, no combustion happening. So you want to pull that fuse, and I'm going to show you where that fuse is for my car, the Toyota MR2 and you can look for it in your own factory manual and it's just a simple fuse, you just pull it, put it back in when you're done the test. Um, so once we remove the, the spark plugs, once we removed the fuse, um, we want to reconnect the battery and we want to install something called a pressure gauge. Um, so this is the gauge that I purchased um, just online and it's a fairly simple unit. Um, it's just a hose. Um, it comes with a, a number of different endings uh, depending on what kind of thread you have. Um, so this is the thread for my, my engine. And it's just a dial gauge showing the compression uh, pressure. And so what we do is we're going to screw this end of the tester into where the spark plug goes. Um, we're going to turn the engine over a couple times. So we're going to crank the engine. Uh, no fuel will be sprayed and the piston will move up and down causing uh, pressure to build and we're going to read what that pressure is here on the gauge compare it to what a, a healthy engine should be and then we can release the pressure just by pushing this button here move on to the next cylinder. Um, you want to remove all the spark plugs all at once because um, you want to make it easy for the engine to turn over so you don't want to have to build pressure in every single one of the cylinders because um, you can think of the engine has to work harder if it has to build pressure in every single cylinder but if we remove all the spark plugs, we're creating uh, an air escape, and so it doesn't have to work as hard. Um, and so we don't drain our battery, we don't overwork our engine while doing this test. So this is the specialty tester unit um, or uh, tool that you need to buy. Um, it's about, I think, $75, the same price as paying a mechanic to do it once. Um, and you have this forever. So might as well go ahead and buy this and I can show you the rest of the steps. All you need are some simple hand tools and you know, half an hour to kill. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we are ready to do our compression check. We removed the valve cover, um, we removed all the spark plugs, and we removed all the high tension leads. So all our cylinders are open, they're ready to go. Um, if you want to know how to do this, look at the spark plug inspection video. Um, as I said before, I don't know if you remember, but we need to remove the um, fuse that controls the power to the fuel injectors. 
Um, we don't want to squirt any fuel into the uh, and into the combustion chambers while we're performing this test. So in the engine bay, you need to locate your engine main fuse box. And so mine is right here. And if you open that up, you should be able to find a fuse labeled uh, EFI. So it'll be labeled on the top of the fuse box. And in my case, it is a 15 amp fuse. And so we just remove that um, that fuse. Uh, you remove remove that fuse um, because we don't want any fuel to be squirted in um, while we're performing this test. So fuse is removed, spark plugs are all removed, everything is ready to go. So the next step is to install our compression gauge. So we're going to start with cylinder one, and all we need to do is screw in the end of the compression gauge until it's nice and snug. So we just keep going by hand until we can't turn it anymore. Okay, and now we can install the gauge. Okay, so we release any residual pressure by press pressing the button and now we're ready to perform the compression test. So what we need to do is get into the car, um, fully open the throttle, so push your throttle all the way down. This will open up the throttle plate to allow air to go into the engine and we're going to crank um, about three times. So let the engine go over, you know, turn over about three, three to five times and um, then turn off the engine come back, check the compression pressure, and then write it down. So I have a book here. I have a list of cylinder number. Uh, this is a, a dry test. So there's a difference between a wet test and a dry test. And so for first we're performing our dry compression test. And depending on what we find, we may perform a wet test. And this involves pouring a little bit of oil into the cylinder to see if that in improves our compression and that indicates cylinders are the cylinder rings being worn, the piston rings. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give this a try for cylinder number one and show you what happens. Um, I just need to go run and get my keys one second. So I let the engine turn over five, about five times, and now if we read the gauge, it's at about 170, 174, 174 psi. Okay. So we go ahead and we write that down in our book. This is a dry test, 174 psi, and now we release the pressure in the gauge. Now we can remove the gauge, we unscrew, and we do this same test for cylinders 2, 3, and 4, and we write down our results and we compare at the end what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you the results. So we've completed all our um, tests of each of the cylinders and our results are 174, 170, 170, 178 PSI. Um, so fairly consistent between each of the cylinders and I believe the factory specification is 180 PSI. So we're right bang on, we're within you know um, tolerances of that PSI and so the engine seems to be healthy. Um, just as a note, if you got really poor readings on say one or two of the cylinders during your dry test, like I said before, you could do a wet test and so what you would just do is pour a small amount of motor oil, doesn't matter what thickness, preferably a lighter thickness, um, into the cylinder, just a few drops, and then reperform that compression test and that oil would move around the, the cylinder and sort of plug up those holes 
if there were holes you know, or damage to the piston rings. And if you reperform the compression test and it was much higher, that indicates that you have worn cylinder walls, worn piston rings. Um, if there was no change, that means you might have a sticking valve in the head um, and oil wouldn't change anything like that. So that's a wet compression test. Um, I don't have to do it today because my compression seems fine dry, but you could do it um, if you had some sort of weird readings in one or two of the cylinders. Um, just as a final note, um, you know, since we're done, we can put everything back. We put the spark plugs back in, we reassemble everything, put the fuse back in. But just as a final note, I just want to make sure um, to, to mention that this particular compression tester um, is a peak and hold value uh, reading. So it actually holds the highest pressure that it sees and it won't leak until you press this release valve. So um, leaving the, the tester in over time and seeing if there's any cylinder leakage that way won't work with this type of tester um, because it has a check valve which holds the pressure and ho holds that peak reading. Um, so you can't leave this installed in, this, in, the, in the cylinder and see if the, you know, the pressure is leaking out over time. Um, so just be aware of that. that these, this one in particular, but most of them are, are peak and hold type um, compression testers. So we're gonna go ahead and reassemble everything, reinstall the spark plugs, high tension leads, valve cover, put the fuse back in, and that is how easy and how simple a compression test is. You only need a few hand tools. I can show you here, everything I need is right there. Just a ratchet, socket, socket, um, spark plug socket, and the compression tester itself, which is fairly inexpensive and you can use on just about any car. Um, really great to do this kind of test when buying a used car um, to see the health of the engine. And just as a really great diagnostic tool, um, to see what's going on without having to take apart the entire engine block. So as always, good luck and have fun.